In the near future, the main character, Alex sits at a bar called the Korova with his gang, Pete, Georgie and Dim drinking the drug-laced milk that the bar serves. The boys discuss what to do with their night as they drink and Alex, the narrator describes the girls in the bar and the effects of the milk plus cocktails that they are all drinking. The milk is laced with hallucinogens that put on into a stupor, as Alex notes by pointing out another patron at the bar, a man who is slumped over and babbling nonsense. When the gang's drugs kick in Alex leads them out of the bar and onto the streets where they come across an old man returning from the library. The boys taunt the man before ripping apart his books and pulling out his false teeth and tearing off his clothes. Only then do they leave him alone on the street. The gang go to a bar Duke of New York where four older women flirt with them after the boys buy drinks for them. The gang spends all of the money they have stolen and realize that they must steal more. They leave the bar and go to a corner store where they put on masks and steal the money from the register, severely beating the store owner and his wife. After robbing the store, the drugs return to the Duke of New York to spend time with the ladies again. When the police come to question them, the ladies lie and say that they were with them the whole night. The boys taunt the police who are helpless to arrest them. The boys leave the bar and come across an old drunk man singing songs in the street. After assaulting him, the man keeps singing. Dim punches the man in the mouth to get him to be quiet. The man starts talking about the state of the world and Alex, suddenly interested, tells the boys to hold off and asks him to continue. The man says that that young people are taking over everything in him, an old man, can't even live in the world anymore without being assaulted. He tells the boys that he is not afraid of them because, being drunk, he cannot feel their punches. The boys begin beating him again and keep going until he vomits up blood. When they continue their walk, the boys come across another gang of drugs. The leader of the other drugs, Billaboy challenges them to a fight. Just as Alex and his gang are getting the upper hand, sirens start up nearby. Both gangs scatter and Alex and his drugs hide in an alleyway between two apartment buildings. While catching his breath, Alex looks into one of the houses and notes that the state is showing a world cast on all of the televisions. Alex notices Dim staring dumbly at the moon and tells him to pay attention and that they need a car. The boys manage to steal a car and eventually decide to do the old surprise visit or breaking and entering. The boys come across a house where Alex affects a courteous tone and asks the woman inside for a glass of water. Of course, when she opens the door, the boys push past her and put on their masks. The woman's husband is a writer who is working on his manuscript titled, A Clockwork Orange. The boys make fun of the title before ripping the manuscript to pieces. The writer attempts to defend himself against the boys but the gang restrains and beats him. Georgie and Pete raid the pantry but Alex stops them and claims he is disgusted. He tells them to hold the writing while he and Dim rape his wife. After they finish the drugs leave the house and return to their car where they go back out on the town. The gang returns to the Canovo milk bar where they notice that a flood of new patrons have come in. One woman sings a few bars from an opera to Alex and Dim makes fun of her. 
Alex becomes enraged and calls Dim a filthy drooling mannerless bastard before punching him in the mouth. This sparks a fight between the two boys and Pete tries to calm them both down. Alex tells them that he is the leader and Dim has to learn his place and the other boys are too afraid of him to speak out. Dim drops the argument and says that they should all go home and go to bed. Alex leaves the bar with a razor already in his hand in preparation for retaliation from Billaboy's gang. Alex returns home to his mother's apartment and eats the dinner that she has prepared for him. Before going to sleep Alex listens to classical music on his stereo and thinks about what he read of the manuscript from the writer's house. The next morning Alex is too tired to go to school and complains to his mother. She is skeptical, but agrees to let him stay home. Alex explains to the reader that the state requires all adults to work when they finish school and that his father works at a dye works while his mother works at a state-controlled food market. Alex falls asleep again and is awoken to the sound of the doorbell ringing. At the door is P.R. Deltoid, Alex's post-corrective advisor. Deltoid tells Alex that he knows about the fight will Billaboy and that the police are looking for him and his gang. Alex assures Deltoid that he is innocent but Deltoid does not believe him. He tells Alex to stay out of trouble and warns him that the police will want to question him. Deltoid leaves and Alex thinks that he has no reason to be worried. Alex thinks that a government that doesn't allow its people to misbehave denies them their right to be a human being. Alex enjoys committing crimes and doesn't intend to stop. Alex eats breakfast and scoffs at the story about the violent, modern youth, in the newspaper. He remembers a theory he once read about how a greater appreciation for art would stem the violence in modern youth. Alex thinks that this is ridiculous because for him violence has always been art. Alex leaves his parents' apartment to go to the record shop. While there he sees two ten-year-old girls and convinces them to come back to his apartment with him to listen to classical music. Once he gets them there he injects himself with a drug, gets the girls drunk and then rapes them. After the girls leave in hysterics, Alex listens to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and dozes off again. Alex waits late in the evening and brushes off his parents' concern before meeting the drugs again. The drugs are sarcastic to Alex and before long another infight breaks out. The other drugs tell Alex that they want a more democratic approach to the group and that they have come up the plan for the night themselves. Alex begins to play along but before they can leave the building Alex hears some of Beethoven's violin concerto and draws a razor on Georgie. He and Georgie tussle until Alex cuts Georgie's hand. Dim comes after him with a chain but Alex manages to cut his wrist. Pete stands on the sidelines, too scared to react and worried about Dim, Alex, flush with victory. Binds Dim's wound himself and brings them to the Duke of New York in the hopes of reconciliation. Georgie then tells him of the plan to rob an old, rich mansion called the Mance. The boys approach the Mance and Alex, intending to reassert his leadership, has the boys boost him into a high window so that he can go in and do the job himself. Inside, an old woman sits surrounded by many cats. Alex intends to beat and rape her and take everything valuable in the house, but as he is approaching her he is distracted by a bust of Beethoven on the mantel. 
Alex slips on a saucer of milk laid out for the cats and the old woman begins beating him with her cane. Alex knocks her over but one of he accidentally steps on one of the cats which attack him. Alex trips again and the old woman calls on her cats to attack him. To Alex's surprise, the cats do. Enraged, Alex manages to knock the old woman unconscious with a heavy silver statue from the mantle, however, he hears a police siren outside and realizes that he must escape. Outside, Dim waits for him and whips him in the eyes with his chain. The rest of the drugs run off, laughing. Alex is picked up by the police and taunted as they beat him. In the police station, Alex demands a lawyer and is laughed and beaten again by the police. PR Deltoid visits Alex and spits in his face before leaving. The officers force Alex to make a statement confessing to his crimes. Alex confesses everything he did for the past 24 hours and includes the betrayal by his friends. The police put Alex in a holding cell where he has to fight off two prisoners trying to molest him. Alex eventually manages to get some sleep and dreams about Beethoven. He imagines violent lyrics to Ode to Joy. An officer wakes him the next day and tells him that the old woman that he assaulted has died overnight. After many court hearings and testimonies from P.R. Deltoid, Alex is sentenced to 14 years in a state jail. He is given an identifying number and told that while in jail he will only be known by this number. Over time we are told that the first two years of prison are a nightmare for Alex. He is made to work every day making matchboxes in the workshop and constantly assaulted by fellow prisoners and guards. He misses his days as a criminal and wishes he could get out. When he hears that Georgie has been killed while robbing a house with Dim and Pete he is overjoyed. Alex gets a new job in the prison operating the stereo for the prison chaplain. He enjoys this and likes the chaplain. The chaplain encourages him to read the Bible and Alex enjoy the violence and sex in the book. He listens to classical music as he reads about Jesus' suffering on the cross. Alex asks the chaplain about a new program he has heard of which shortens prisoner sentences. The chaplain says that he doesn't approve of it but Alex presses to be recommended for it. The program, called Ludovico's Technique, is experimental. After getting into a fight with another inmate, Alex is sentenced to participate in the technique regardless. It is called reclamation technique by the doctors. The chaplain seems to be upset as he apologizes to Alex for what is about to happen to him. Reclamation is another experimental technique that is supposed to remove the desire to hurt others. After the treatment is over, Alex will be released from jail. Alex thinks the idea that the state will make him into a good boy is laughable. The next day, Alex is brought to a hospital-like building where he meets a doctor named Brenham. Alex is given his own room and many amenities and told that all that he has to do for the procedure is watch a series of special films. After every meal, he is to be injected with something that Alex assumes is a supplement, however, the next day he is taken to a room with a huge wall screen and strapped down to a chair. The chair has special clips that are designed to keep his eyelids open at all times. Alex, already physically weak from his first injection, 
is forced to watch a film about an old man being beaten and stripped naked by two young men. Afterward, he watches a violent film about a young girl being gang raped. Alex feels sick watching the films and finds that he is reacting differently to the violence than he normally does. He wonders how the videos could have been made with the victim's consent as they appear so real. Alex is made to watch more violent films as a doctor named Brodsky measures his reactions through wires that are connected to the chair. Alex begins to get more and more sick watching the films and begs for the doctors to turn them off. The doctors just laugh at him. After he is done for the day, Alex is returned to his room where he is visited by Dr. Brenham. Brenham tells Alex that his brain is in the process of learning that violence is wrong and that he should expect to feel a bit sick for a few days. After he leaves Alex thinks about how he still plans to do evil things after being released from prison. A man referred to as a discharge officer visits Alex and talks with him a bit. Before leaving, he asks Alex if he would like to punch him to see how he is getting on with his treatment. Alex does take a swing at the man but misses and afterward becomes violently ill just as he had when he was watching the movies. That night Alex dreams of more violence and wakes to vomit. He finds that he cannot leave his room to do so and must wait till nausea has passed. He lies on his bed shaking and afraid to go back to sleep. Alex resumes his treatment the next day and reacts with violent anger when one of the films plays Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. He calls out for the doctors to stop the film but the doctors only puzzle over his reaction to the music. The doctors tell Alex that he is undergoing a treatment which involves associative learning. They are teaching his brain that violence is wrong by injecting him with something that makes him sick before viewing violent films. Alex assures them that he has learned his lesson but the doctors merely laugh at this and pat him on the shoulder. Alex continues his treatment for many days. His attempts to rebel are all met with failure. One day Alex realizes that the wires and injections are no longer causing him nausea and headaches that he is receiving but the films alone are doing it. This realization brings him to tears. Later that night Alex attempts to knock out an orderly to escape but when he raises his fist to strike the man he is overwhelmed with nausea and staggered by it. The orderly punches him in the face. Alex realizes that he feels better receiving the punch than giving one. On the last day of his treatment, Alex is given back all of his old things including his razor. He is brought to the screening room once again but this time, in place of a screen a panel of well-dressed men sits to judge him. Dr. Brodsky tells the men to observe Alex as a model citizen. An old man is brought in to taunt and pinches Alex and he longs to reach for his razor but immediately feels sick when he thinks about it. Alex realizes that he must change the man's hostility. He offers the man his razor, but the man slaps it out of his hand. Desperate to escape the situation, Alex begins licking the man's boots and clings to his ankles until the man falls over. The doctors laugh at this but Alex is pained by the man's violent fall and helps him to his feet. Brodsky calls the man and the man leaves the room. Brodsky tells the panel that any violent thoughts on Alex's part are accompanied by immediate physical distress and thus he is forced to show good behavior to avoid it. 
Alex is distressed by the argument that ensues between the panel members and asks aloud, What about me? Am I just to be a clockwork orange? One of the panel members scolds Alex for talking and the argument resumes. Brodsky calls in the second volunteer and a beautiful girl enters. Alex thinks about raping her right away but the sickness reasserts itself and he ends up bowing to her and professing a noble devotion. After the girl leaves Alex feels stupid for playing into the doctor's game. Brodsky tells the panel that Alex has become a true Christian who is ready to turn the other cheek. Alex is made to undergo more humiliating demonstrations and press conferences before being released and put out on the street with nothing but the clothes on his back. He goes to a diner for breakfast and finds a picture of himself at one of the conferences in the paper. The accompanying article talks about his treatment and what it means for the future of crime, Alex decides to head home and notices that the streets are cleaner than he remembers them. When he gets to his parents' house he finds a stranger eating dinner with them. Alex learns that his parents have rented out his room to this man. His mother begins to cry, worrying that Alex has broken out of prison but he explains that he was released, however, when Alex goes to his room he finds that all of his things are gone. His father explains that the police took all of his possessions to compensate his victim. In this case, all of his things went to the old woman's cats, Alex must keep smiling to keep from getting sick. Joe, the lodger begins to berate him and his father tells him that he cannot stay there. Alex begins to cry and leaves his parents' house. He goes to the record store he used to frequent and asks to hear Mozart's 40th symphony but when the music starts he quickly remembers the damage that Ludovico's technique did to his love of classical music and must run from the store. He goes to the Korova next and orders a hallucinogenic milk drink. As he drinks and hallucinates he begins to think about killing himself. Alex goes to the library to research painless suicide methods and, while there is discovered by an old man named Jack whom he beat up several years earlier. Jack recognizes him and calls the other elderly library patrons to assault Alex. Alex cannot defend himself even though the patrons are all feeble. Alex quickly asks the librarian to call the police who arrive after Alex has been soundly beaten. When the officers arrive, Alex is shocked to find that Billaboy and Dim are among them. Dim and Billaboy have heard about Alex's treatment. They assume that Alex provoked the library patrons and drive him out into the countryside to beat him brutally and leave him out in the wilderness. Alex avoids going back to town and instead follows the sound of a tractor to a farming village. He knocks on the door of a cottage and begs for a glass of water from the man who answers. The man living in the cottage is the writer whom Alex beat two years earlier. He doesn't recognize Alex and offers him food and charity. The man is a political protester who recognizes Alex from his newspaper article and wants to use Alex to dislodge the current government. He confides in Alex that his wife died of shock after being raped two years earlier. Alex stays the night in the man's cottage and finds another copy of the manuscript, A Clockwork Orange. Leafing through the manuscript, Alex discovers that it is about how the man thinks that people are fruit that grows on a tree that was planted by God, God needs the fruit to slake his thirst for love. 
However, some people are in danger of being turned into machines by the progress of the modern world. Alex beings to doubt the mans who he learns are named F. Alexander, Sanity, F. Alexander is cheerful when he greets Alex that morning and tells him that he has been writing an article about him and talking on the phone to his associates. Alex, remembering the night he attacked F. Alexander's house, unthinkingly responds that he didn't think the man had a phone. F. Alexander tenses up at this but his suspicion passes quickly. When talking to F. Alexander, Alex momentarily slips into speaking with drug slang and this causes F. Alexander to get suspicious again as he remembers the slang from when his home was broken into. F. Alexander's associates, Z. Dolan, Rubenstein and D.B. arrive and fawn over Alex. Dolan wishes that Alex looked more tired and beaten down and this offends Alex who slips back into his slang again. Alex grows increasingly offended by the men treating him like a means toward their political end. 